Hi everybody, it's Lee again with a quick video on white ink workflow using Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. I have a file here. It is all vector artwork. If I go into my outline mode, I can see that just simple vectors. Um, but I, I have just a couple of little gotchas here. Uh, so let's get started on how I actually would approach this. This is a typical workflow for what I do. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could approach this in Illustrator. This happens to be the one that I think works best for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is notice that everything that I have right now is on a single layer. That makes it really convenient for me. It doesn't need to be that way. I could just select everything, put it on a layer maybe. Um, but in this case, I already have a single layer. It makes it a little easier. So I'm going to select everything in that layer. And then I'm going to come over here to duplicate that layer. What that's going to do is make an exact duplicate. It's going to be directly over the top of what's already there. So I have two identical layers with identical artwork and identical placement. Um, I can now rename this. It doesn't really matter what I name it. Uh, but just to keep stuff clear in my head, now I have white artwork and I have color artwork. And notice that my white is on top in my layers palette of my color artwork. That is going to be important to do that. Make sure that your white is topmost regardless of where the white is going to be printing in your, in your layering. Uh, I, I will turn off my color artwork just to make sure that I don't accidentally do anything with that. Um, now, at this point, a lot of people will just immediately go and fill all of this with a specific color. But if you look at here, uh, at this shape right here, notice that unlike this M, where this is just filled with a solid yellow, and then this is a black fill that's sitting behind it. Notice that this one, and I can see this over here, is a, a red kind of a fuchsia fill, but it has a black stroke uh, applied to it. So it's a line. Um, that line has no inherent thickness in my stroke palette is where I actually tell it. In this case, it's a 16 point stroke. Um, but so if I just fill it, I'll still end up with this black line. So what I generally do in order to overcome this is I'm gonna select everything in my layer. I'll go to object. I'll go to expand and I'll make sure that both fill and stroke are set up. This is going to turn that stroke into two separate shapes that knock each other out, right? So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And visually, nothing really changed except that now I have um, my, my stroke now has, you can see I have edges on the outside and on the inside of this. I still keep my little clear area here. So I think all is good at this point. So the next thing I will do is let's assign it a fill color. It doesn't really matter what I make the fill color. I just generally want to use a color that clashes with, with, with what's already there. So it's very obvious what's going on. Um, and I see that I do in fact have even that little piece of the B uh, that still is clear. So at this point, I have it all filled. The next thing I need to do is go to my swatches palette. So window and swatches. I still have my blue or my cyan fill selected here. So now what I'm going to do is I'll come over here to this new swatch icon and I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here's where we diverge a little bit depending on what rip you have. So if you're using Onyx, you're gonna call it spot one. If you're using Caldera, you can keep it as spot one with one extra little step inside Caldera, or you can call it white, uh, which Caldera will automatically know is white. Uh, I'm using Onyx, so I'm going to keep it as spot one. And then the other thing that I need to do is I do need to make sure that this is set to a spot color. Okay, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. Visually, nothing's going to change on screen except that here in my swatches palette, I now have this spot one. And I can see it's a spot color because it has this little icon in the corner here, which is just a little spot. 
There's two more things that I'm going to do. One is absolutely necessary, but before that, this looks messy to me. And just so that I don't accidentally move something, I'm actually gonna go, here's a little free tip for you here. If I go to Window and I go to Pathfinder, Pathfinder has a whole bunch of operations that I can do using shapes. And in this case, what I'm gonna choose is the Unite filter. And watch what happens when I click on Unite. All of my inside edges go away. Oh, look, there was just a tiny little smidgen of white, of, of you know, a clear space there as well. Um, but all of it goes away, and now it's just one simple shape. It's what we call a compound shape. It's got the holes in it, but it's one object rather than, you know, a hundred. Okay, so that's not necessary to do that. I just like a clean palette, so I'm going to do that. But the next step is absolutely necessary. Let me jump over to this other file for a moment and show you what's going to happen. I have a cyan circle. I have a magenta circle standing on top of it. Right now, the magenta is hiding a portion of the cyan circle, right? We call this knocking it out. And if I were to print this, then in this area right here where they overlap, I would only get magenta. I would not get any cyan. In the case of white ink, I don't want to just print white, I want to also print all of the image that's behind it. So I need to make it so that the white doesn't hide what's behind it. We don't do that with transparency. What we're going to do that with instead is a cool little printer's trick. Um, so first what I'm gonna do is go over here to view and I'll choose overprint preview. This will show me how it'll actually print. So in this case, this is showing me exactly how it will print, which is the magenta will knock out the cyan. But now watch, I select my magenta. I go over to Window and I choose Attributes. And this is a fill only on this shape. There's no stroke. So Overprint Fill is the only option I have. Watch what happens when I click on this. Now where they overlap, I am printing the magenta from this shape and the cyan from the shape underneath it together. So if I go back over to my artwork here, and I'm gonna turn on my color artwork layer just so you can see this happen. Again, I'll go over here to view and overprint preview. And then I'll go to my attributes, remember window and attributes. I'll go over to my attributes palette and I'll overprint fill. And now all of my color shows up there as well. So that's all I need to do. Right. If I turn this layer off, I can see what's going on. Uh, do remember to turn the layer back on before you save the file or your rip will just ignore the white entirely. So turn that layer back on. I can see it's drastically affected my color everywhere I want it to. That tells me that I'm printing white there. At that point, save the file as an EPS, PDF, whatever vector format you prefer and rip the file and you're good to go. So I hope that's been really helpful for you and uh, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.